Welcome to the video on naming compounds. So we're going to look at organic molecules, how to name them, and these are just carbon-based chains. So you're going to get a straight line of carbon, you can see carbon chains which have branches with other carbons on them, and you can see rings. Finally, you need to know that these can vary in length. They can be short and they can be very, very long. The other thing you need to know is that all carbons form four bonds. So here you'll see this carbon is only bonded to one other carbon. It only has one bond. So we use up the extra bond spaces, the remaining three spots it has out of four, with hydrogen atoms. So here you'll see that this end carbon is attached to three hydrogens because it only has one more bond. Or in the middle here, this carbon already has two bonds so it only needs two extra hydrogens. Whereas if we look at a branch chain, you can see a carbon here has three bonds so it only needs one more hydrogen. Whereas this one at the end, has only one bond and needs three extra hydrogens. This is the same with carbons in a ring, but you'll notice here that you can just draw lines instead of drawing a hydrogen. This is okay in your NCEA exam, because when an examiner is testing you on this, they won't worry so much about whether you know for sure it's a hydrogen, that's gonna be expected. They wanna make sure that you've remembered that every carbon has four bonds in total. So you can just draw these extra lines out with nothing and it'll be assumed that there's a hydrogen on the end of it. Just makes your drawings faster. So these two chains, for example, could be drawn with just lines to make a total of four bonds for all of them and hydrogens would be on the end of them like this drawing up here. So now that you understand really what organic molecules are, they're carbon-based chains with extra hydrogens to fill up the spots, we're going to look at all the variations you can get and how to name them. When naming these molecules, the first thing you need to know is what's called the prefix. This tells you how many carbons are in the molecule. So if you have one carbon, you need the prefix meth. Two carbons is eth, three carbons is prop, four is bute. When we get up to five, it starts getting similar to shapes, so it becomes pent, same as a pentagon. Hex for six, which is the same as a hexagon, and hept for seven, which you probably don't know, and oct for eight. Same as an octagon or an octopus with eight legs. So we're gonna look at how these prefixes get added on to tell us what kind of chain there are made up of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, or eight different carbons. Now, carbon numbers go much, much beyond eight, but these are the ones you need to know for your exams. So now that we've looked at the prefixes, how many carbons there actually are, we also need to learn the endings of these prefixes, which is what kind of molecule it is. So we're gonna go through these one by one. The most basic one that you need to know is called an alkane. This is just a straight carbon, carbon, and hydrogen chain. There's nothing extra, there's no extra double, triple bonds, any extra atoms attached. Just simple. This is what you will have seen on the earlier slide. So in this case, we can look at it and see that it has one carbon, so it must have the prefix meth. That's the first part of its name. And then, seeing that it doesn't have any extra triple or double bonds or any extra atoms attached to it, we can know it's an alkane. So we add the ending ane onto the end, making the name methane. Finally, we look at a thing called the molecular formula. This tells us how many carbons there are, how many hydrogens there are, and what extra atoms are attached. Here, we can see that our number of carbons is one, number of hydrogens is four, and there's no extra atoms added onto the end, there's nothing there. So there's just one carbon, four hydrogens. And if you're really wanting to figure out the number of hydrogens, say you get asked for this in your exam, from a name, you can know that the number of carbons, which you'll know from this prefix, and to get the hydrogens, you multiply that number by two, and you add two. So when there's one carbon, you go times two is two, plus two equals four. That's how you get four hydrogens. If you had a hundred carbons, you'd have 200, two times a hundred, plus two you'd have C100H202. It's just a formula that can save you having to draw out all the carbons and hydrogens and trying to count them all, just to be sure. So for every kind of atom, we're gonna go through the structural formula, which is what it looks like when it's drawn, the name, which is called the IUPAC name, you don't need to know what this stands for, which is the prefix and the ending and any little extras we have to put in, and the molecular formula, which tells us the number of carbons, hydrogens, and any extra atoms that are attached. Let's look through the next one, which is called an alkene. You'll see the structure of an alkene is slightly different. We have a double bond here. This means that the carbons have taken one of their extra bonds and chosen to share it with each other, making a stronger bond than they had before. And this gives it the ending alkene. 
Now, when you look at that as a structural formula, you'll see you still have the carbons, but you have less hydrogens because the carbons have already used up two of their bonds, so they only need another two attached. So here, if we have two carbons, that gives us the prefix eth, and ethen gives us our name, ethene. Now, one more thing that we need to notice is this number that I've put between the prefix and the ending. And that is because the double bond is attached to the first carbon. Now you don't actually need to put the number in in this specific case because as you'll notice, the double bond can only be attached to the first carbon. However, when there's like a hundred carbons, you want to know exactly where that double bond is. So you put the number in here. Now the molecular formula for this one is two carbons, carbons is two, and number of hydrogens is four. And if you want a formula to work that out, you can take the number of carbons and double it to get the number of hydrogens. Let's look at alkynes now. Alkynes are very similar to alkenes, except they've got a triple bond. This is where a carbon's in a row, they've got one bond to the rest of the chain, and three bonds shared with another carbon atom. So a structural formula could look like this. We've got one, two, three carbons in a row, which gives it the prefix prop, and you'll see there's a triple bond between the first and the second carbon atoms. There's just hydrogens attached to all of the rest of the bonds. So that gives it a name of propine. Ein is the ending of an alkyne name. And again, if you were being really good, you'd put a one between the prop and the ein. Although again, it can only be attached to the first carbon, so we don't have to include the number here. The molecular formula of this one is number of carbons is three, number of hydrogens is four. Let's look at haloalkanes. Haloalkanes just means it's an alkane, just a straight chain of carbons, but it has what's called a halogen, an extra atom attached. Now, there are several different types of halogen atoms, but you will just see chlorine and bromine as your most common examples in NCEA. So for example, you might have a chain of carbons, just like an alkane, and there'll be a bromine attached to one of them. Now to name this one, we take the first syllable of the name of bromine, that's brom, and add an O to it. So it becomes bromo. Or for chlorine, you take the first syllable chlor and add O, making chloro. But before we get to that, we're going to look at the carbon chain. Here we've got four carbons in the longest chain. So this gives it the prefix bute. And when we're looking at the chain, we'll notice that there's no extra double, triple bonds, nothing else attached. So we just put butane as our core name. This bromine is going to be an extra we'll add on. And we're going to use the name brom, the first syllable plus O, bromo, to put it in front. So here's our name, bromobutane. But we have to do one more thing, and it comes back to the numbers. We have to say which carbon is it attached to. Is it attached to one at the end? Is it in the middle? This one is attached to the number two carbon. We always count from the closest end we possibly can. So number one and number two. So our final answer is two bromobutane. The molecular formula for this one, we have number of carbons is four, number of hydrogens is nine, and we have a Br of bromine attached to the side. So this is our molecular formula. And just remember, bromine becomes bromo, and we put it in front of the name. Or chlorine becomes chloro, and that becomes in front of the name as well. In some advanced questions, you can also see they might have two bromines attached, or two chlorines attached to this one molecule. In that case, you have to call it dibromo, or dichloro, if there's more than one, if there's two. And you also put their numbers in front. So if it's attached to the second and the third carbons, you'd call it 2,3-dibromobutane. So that is numbering the halogen, numbering the atom. Let's look at alcohol groups now. Alcohols mean that there is an OH group attached to one of the carbons. So you might know that the alcohol within alcoholic beverages is ethanol. This is eth, meaning that there's two carbons, and enol is the ending for alcohols. In this case, though, we've got one, two, three, four, five carbons in our chain, giving us the prefix pent. And enol is on the ending, giving us the name pentanol. But we need to know which carbon the OH group is attached to. So we need to put the number three, because it's on the third carbon from the end, in this name. And we put it in front of the ol at the end. So this becomes pentan 3 ol The molecular formula of this is C5, five carbons, H, there's 11 of them, and there's an OH group, an alcohol group attached to this. Now you'll notice that there's actually a hydrogen here and 11 more hydrogens here, but we keep them separate because it makes it easy to read if we know we've got general carbons and hydrogens and then an OH group. You can see straight away that that's an alcohol group. 
Now also remember to put the number before the ol. Next is carboxylic acids. In carboxylic acids, we have a double bonded O, it's always on the end carbon, and an OH group, an alcohol group attached to it. The reason it's always on the end carbon is because it uses up three of a carbon's bonds. So it can only ever attach to one more carbon, meaning it can't sit in the middle of the chain and attach to both sides. So the double bonded O and the OH group make it a carboxylic acid and give it the ending a noic acid. So in this case, our prefix is one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's hex and our ending is a noic acid. So hexanoic acid is our answer. In our molecular formula, we have six carbons and 11 hydrogens if you count them. And then the ending we put on this is a OOH. So that when you read something like this, you can see straight away that it's a carboxylic acid. Finally, we're gonna look at amines. Now, amines have an NH2 group attached to it. And for the sake of NCEA, you can assume they're always on the end, so you don't have to worry about numbering it this time. So naming this one, we have the prefix and we add amide onto the end. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven carbons, which makes it hept, and heptamide is our name, adding amide onto that. With the molecular formula of C7, seven carbons, and hydrogens, there are 15 if you count them. And again, we keep the NH2 separate so that we can see straight away that there's an amine group attached on the end of it. So now we've learned all of the prefixes that we need with the number of carbons. We've learned the endings for all the different types of molecules you're gonna see. Now we're gonna look at the final few rules for naming. So we might have side chains as well. They might not all go on one beautiful straight chain. So here we can see we've got five carbons in a row, that's pentane, and we've got two extra carbons coming off the side. And these two extra carbons have the prefix eth, and we give it the name ethyl, YL gets added on for any kind of side chain. So take the side chain, eth, add YL, and put it in front of your original name. It's ethyl. And as always, we wanna know where is the side chain attached? It's attached to the third main carbon. So that makes it 3-ethylpentane. But there's a little trick with this as well. The main chain is not always the one that's straight. It's the longest chain that you can find. So in this case, it's no longer pentane running straight across the top. It's actually hexane because the longest carbon chain is six carbons going around a corner here. So be careful of that. And you'll see that there's an extra side group off here off the one, two, three carbon. Now remember our prefix for one is meth, we add YL, so it's methyl, and it's attached to the third carbon. So we would write 3 methylhexane as the name for this one here. Okay, I'm gonna do one final example which shows you all of these rules combined, because it makes a complex name, but every one of the rules by themselves is quite simple. So just go through it step by step. The first step is see the number of carbons in the longest chain. In this case, it's one, two, three, four, five, six. Now we could count around the corner as well, it doesn't matter, but it's simpler just to do it in a straight line. So six means hex, and we've got a double bond in that line, so we call it hexene. And don't forget our numbers here. Remember, the double bond is attached to the second carbon. We always count from the closest side. So it becomes hex two ene. So these are steps hopefully we picked up from our table over here. But you can see, we've got an extra group on the side, we've got an extra bromine and an extra chlorine. What do we do with these ones? We'll go through them one by one. So first, let's look at this extra side group. We've got one carbon on the side chain, so that's a methyl group. And we already numbered this carbon number two from hexene. So this methyl group is attached to the number five carbon down here. Now if we look at the bromine, we know to add bromo in front of it, and add the number of the carbon it's attached to. So that becomes one, two, three bromo, and then all the rest of the name. And we still have a chlorine group remaining. So we have to put chloro in front of this name and the number of the carbon it's attached to. So this is carbon number six in the chain, and so it's six chloro in front of all of that. So as you can see, piece by piece, you start off with hexene, add in the number, put in front of the group, whatever it is, say a methyl group, and the number, the next group, and the number, the next group, and the number, and keep doing it until you have all of the groups accounted for. Now these names start to look crazy, but as long as you follow these rules, you'll always get to the correct answer. Here's what you need to know. You need to know the prefixes that go with each of the number of carbons. So if your main chain only has one carbon, it's meth, 
Two is Earth, three is Probe, four is Butte, five is Pent, six is Hex, seven is Hept, and eight is Oct. Now these prefixes go before the kind of molecule it is. If it's just a straight carbon chain with nothing extra, it's an alkane and you add ane onto the end of it. A double bond is ene for an alkene. A triple bond is ine for an alkyne. For a haloalkane, you're usually going to see chlorine and bromo. So you'll add the first syllable chlor and O, so chloro and bromo in front of a name. For an alcohol, you have an OH group and you add anol onto the end of the prefix. For a carboxylic acid, you've got a double bonded O and an OH group. It's always on the end and you add anoic acid onto the end of the prefix. And finally we have amines, which have an NH2 group, an amide group, added onto the end of a carbon chain. Also, you need to know that a structural formula means a drawing. That's where we draw the number of carbons, the double bonds, and the extra groups that are attached to it. Remember, you only have to draw lines for the extra hydrogens because the examiners will just want to see that you know there's another bond there going to a hydrogen. You can also cheat this one a little bit and you might see a drawing as just CH2 because in this little part, it's still the structure, there's a carbon and two hydrogens. Then there's a carbon, then there's a bromine, then there's a carbon with three hydrogens attached to it. So you could write it like that if that's easier for you. Secondly, we have the molecular formula. This is the number of each kind of atom. So we have the number of carbons and hydrogens first, and then we add on the extra group. So that's three carbons in this case, five hydrogens, and a bromine. And finally, we have the name. Now this includes the position and the number. So for example, here, we've got propene, because it's three carbons, that's prop, and there's a double bond, that's ene. Now we've been good and included the number because this double bond is attached to the first carbon. However, we don't actually need to put the number because it always must be attached to the first carbon. There's nowhere else it could possibly be. If it's in this other place, we just count from the other side. So we can actually take that number one out if we want to. Next, we have to add in that this bromine group is attached to the second carbon. And remember, for halogens, we put O. So it's bromo, propene, and two goes in the front because it's attached to the second carbon. So your final answer is two bromo, propene. Let's finally look at a question now. This is the type of thing you'll see in your exam. They'll give you one, say the structural formula, and you'll have to name it, or vice versa. So here we can name this one. We can count the number in the chain. We've got one, two, three carbons. So that's propane. There's no double bonds or anything like this, so it's ane, it's an alkane. But we also have this chlorine group attached to the very end. So we need to put chloro in front of that. And that's attached to the very first carbon. Remember, we count from the side that's closest. So we put the one in front of it. Next, let's look at this. Now, this isn't an alkane group anymore. This is a carboxylic acid group because it has a double bonded O and an OH attached to it. And remember, there's also three carbons. So that's prop as well as the prefix. So that becomes prop and then the ending of anoic acid for a carboxylic acid. We don't have any extra chlorines or bromines attached, so we're actually finished. We don't need to add anything in front of that name. Now let's try and go the other way. Let's see if we have 4-methyl-pent-2-ene, if we can draw it. So we start from the most right-hand side name, that's pent-2-ene. So we know it's an alkene, and we know pent means it has five carbons. So if we draw out the five carbons first of all, and then we draw a double bond on the second carbon. So that's how we do it there. And finally, we have a methyl group. Now, meth means only one carbon, and it's on the fourth of this chain. So one, two, three, four, we draw this extra carbon group here. Now, you might not know from the start how many hydrogens is on each one, so you can just draw lines up to make all of the bonds out to four in total. And finally, if we want to draw butanoic acid, remember, we're going to need to draw this double bonded O and this OH group attached to the final carbon. And there's going to be four carbons because we've got the prefix of bute. So here we draw our four carbons, and then on the end, we do our carboxylic acid group, the double bonded O and the OH. Then we make sure we have the right number of hydrogens so that there's a total of four bonds with every single carbon. And this is all of the rules you need to know for naming compounds. It's a lot to remember, but if you go through them step by step and learn all the rules, you can name anything.